This is the Behringer BDI-21. And let's be real here. It's just a really cheap copy of the Tech 21 Sans Amp, but while it is cheap, it sounds surprisingly good. It's surprisingly sturdy, and instead of being $200, it's only $33. Hmm. So, history lesson. Tech 21 created the Sans Amp in 1989, and since then, that very classic, full, gritty bass tone has probably been used on hundreds, if not thousands, of recordings across the world. It's a very straightforward pedal that does a lot. It sounds fantastic, and it sure has one hell of a staple in bass history. And now for Behringer, they make a lot of inexpensive, made in China music equipment that is very cheap, but for the most part, they're usually direct copies of whatever they're trying to do. And this is in for basically a lot, if not their entire lineup, I'm pretty sure. Uh, not saying they don't make quality stuff, but a lot of it's basically just direct copies and they put it in a cheaper enclosure, uh, cheaper labor, and that's about it. So yeah. And really the BDI-21 is no different. While it is a cheap made in China pedal, it sounds a lot like the Tech 21 Sans Amp. Now, it's been probably a good three, four, five years since I've had a Sans Amp, but this is pretty spot on from what I remember, except for a few little things. Now, this is directly copying the version one of the Tech 21 Sans Amp. And now this was just a very simple and straightforward pedal, whereas the version two had a bit more extra little things to really change your tone around. For your controls, you have drive, which controls your gain, treble and bass, which are your EQ controls, level, which is the overall output, presence, which adds that nice little bit of shimmer to your overall tone, and then blend. And that's basically it. And of course, in the middle, you have that nice ground lift switch to eliminate any hum that will be in your signal too. Then on the top, you have your input, your output, as well as a balanced DI output, which is really cool. Uh, this is something that I kind of thought that they would probably cheap out on and not include, but that's really cool. And another nice feature is you don't only have the option of powering it up via a nine volt adapter, but you have a cool battery compartment on the back as well. And again, this is pretty much a straightforward Sans Amp copy, and there's not really a whole lot to add to that. Now again, it's been a few years since I myself have had a Sans Amp, but uh, while you do get a lot of really just fantastic low gain and mid gain tones, I think when you really start to crank the drive, it gets very just fluttery, very just nasty sounding where it's not really that great. I don't remember if the Sans Amp was like this as well. For some reason, I'm 100% doubting that. But with the Behringer, when you get into that high gain territory, in my opinion, there's not a lot of great tones that you can really make.
And of course, really the biggest difference is the chassis. And that is really the enclosure itself. While the Sans Amp is extremely sturdy, it can withstand I, probably anything, everything. Uh, the Behringer is made out of plastic. But that being said, it's surprisingly sturdy, really. Uh, it's not just a super thin plastic. It actually feels kind of hefty and has a nice weight to it as well. So overall with the BDI-21, what you get is a direct copy of the Tech-21 Sans Amp, but you kind of expect that going into it. It sounds fantastic and there's a lot of great tones to be had for some really just spectacular bass sounds, but uh, that plastic chassis might be something to lean you off of it just because I don't know what the longevity of it would be. And the switch is the main thing I'll be really concerned about. The plastic switch, uh, you don't get that nice click of the metal button that you would with the Sans Amp. So that's the main thing is the longevity of this pedal lasting, especially if you're gigging, I think would be the biggest deterrent for this pedal. But when the Sans Amp itself costs $200 brand new and this costs $35 brand new, to get a great tone for such a low price, you can't beat it. But of course, I wanna know what your guys' thoughts on it are. Uh, do you like the Sans Amp? Do you like the Behringer? Do you think it sounds as good as the Sans Amp? I think that's a really big one too, especially for you guys that have a Sans Amp and play with it religiously. Uh, that's something I'm really interested in to see more of a comparison in how you guys think it sounds. But thank y'all so much for watching again. Uh, if you're not subscribed already, go ahead and do that for more bass videos every single week. And if you wanna help support the channel too, like these beautiful people right here, mwah, mwah. You can head over to my Patreon page for things like early access to videos, giveaways, and more. But as always, thank you so much for watching, for liking, subscribing, for sharing these videos with your friends, sharing them on forums, for you know following me on social media and all that cool stuff in between. I really do appreciate y'all. Hope y'all are staying safe, and I'll see y'all next time. Mm -hmm.